Hey guys, Andy here at MVP Java. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a sweet little library called Java Poet, which creates your .java source code for you, right? So auto-generate source code, basically. Now, you need the dependency off to start, right? So there you go, Java Poet. Last version at this time was 1.8, okay? So that goes in your palm.xml file if you're using Maven. Now, um, here I have an example where I'm gonna be creating this class for the first example, right? So basic class, we have a constructor, and we have a method, right? So I'm gonna show you in the first example, which is gonna be example A here, uh, how to go and, and create that. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually slide this guy down over here so we can follow sequentially how this is going on. Now in my case, I may have, you know, have to read a lot of metadata files and from those metadata files, I would have a program that reads it, interprets it, and then passes what I've interpreted into Java Poet and Java Poet will go and create these hundreds if not thousands of message type files. In my case here, I'm just giving you an example of one here, flight message 225, which might be a message that, let's say, a tower sends the main system to confirm that a flight has taken off, okay? So as you can see, you just pass the aircraft ID for now, for this first example. Now, one thing you gotta realize with Java Poet is you kinda have to reverse your thinking, right? When you're building a class, first you build big to small, right? You build a class, and then you build a method, let's say a constructor, and then you go to your method, and then you build your instance variables and your parameters if you have any, okay? So you're kind of going from top down. Well, in Java Poet, you gotta reverse that thinking. You gotta go from small to big. So you gotta build your fields first or your parameters first and then your methods and your constructors and then attach those to your class. So once you know that, it's actually quite simple to build, okay? Now everything has to do with a spec, right? So this example here, all it does is I instantiate this class and I call it a method generate Java source and I'm putting everything in this method, okay? One thing about uh, Java Poet is it gets very, very long, very fast, okay? So I'm actually putting in the same method, but it's just for the tutorial sake. I'll show you in another tutorial what I've done. I'll make reference to that later on or in another, um, you know, part two or part three, where you can actually go and take a look how I, you know, I broke it up nicely into methods that are maintainable, okay? So everything has to do with a spec. So if you want to build, let's say, a constructor or a method, you deal with a method spec. If you want to build um, a field, right, like this, that's a field spec. If you want to build a parameter, you can call that a, a parameter spec. Okay, so if you want to build a type like a class or an interface or something like that, that's a type spec or an abstract class. Okay, now all these can be inline as well, but I don't want to put everything in line because it's going to be just a huge mess. So I'm going to break it up into its components and then we'll add those components to the class later on. So here we have a method spec. All right, so I want to build a constructor first. So our method spec dot constructor builder. Okay, so everything in Java Poet is a builder and it's got fluent builders, right? So a fluent API that just, you know, you just kind of chain the methods together. So I'm constructing a builder here and uh, I add a parameter, type name dot int. I give it the name aircraft and a modifier final, right? So that's exactly what I did here. This portion over here is what I just said, add parameter, the aircraft ID, aircraft ID, the type name is int. Now here in add parameter, there's a couple of options that we have, okay? We can actually create a parameter spec, like I said just moments ago, okay? So I would, again, use a builder for that. And then once I have my reference, I could attach the reference to the add parameter. Or I could do it inline. This is the inline flavor over here, right? I may not need to reference that parameter a second time. So inline makes sense over here. And I'm going to show you different flavors all over the place, okay? Now the other thing here is you'll notice that there's type, okay? And there's type name. So if we take a look at type over here, right? You can go click on type. You'll notice it's from java.langreflect. So it has nothing to do with Java Poet, which means that it could represent any Java type out there, whether it's primitive or you want to, you know, point to a list. It doesn't really matter any Java type possible. And this was added in the reflection library in 1.5, okay? But I'm not using it. I'm using type name right now. And why am I using type name? Type name in this case is from, you take a look here, Java Poet, right? So that one there is kind of like what we call a dumb identifier, which means that it doesn't really know of the methods associated with that type. And on the other hand, 
I only want a primitive data type. So if you want to just specify primitive data type like I am here, right? This is just a primitive data type int. I'm not going to say type from the java.lang-reflect library. Although you can, I like this method better, okay? So whenever you want to use primitive data types, nice little type name.int, and I'll show you the other flavor with type and parameter name after. Also, if you want to add code, that's with the add statement, okay? So add statement over here. I'm talking about this portion over here. This is a statement. This is a portion of code that I'm adding to a block right the block being associated with the constructor for now so i'm actually just you know using a string here to reference that parameter being passed in into the instance variable that i'll create in a second now here you'll notice i didn't put a semicolon and i didn't put any indentation right and that's the nice thing here is java poet's going to take care of this for me they're going to take care of escaping any special characters of semicolons of tabs all that stuff's going to be taken care of for me and i'm going to add the modifier public here and I'll just build it. And building it will just return to me this whole spec, which I'll then attach after to the class, okay? So I keep doing this over and over again, going from small to big. Now I'm using another method builder, get aircraft ID, this guy over here. And it kind of follows the same logic, right? I want it to be a public method, okay? I want the return type to be a primitive data type. Again, there's that Java poet type name, right? So there's that uh, right over here, there's that return type. I add another statement, return aircraft ID, right? Which is the one over here. Again, semicolon taken care of, tab taken care of, and I build it. So now I have two references. I have the method, get aircraft ID, this guy over here, and I have my constructor over here. I need to attach them eventually, right? So I need to create a class, right? So that I'm using type spec. So type spec dot class builder, there's the name of my class. Now in real life, you would have this as a variable, right? Because like I'm saying, I would be looping through hundreds, if not thousands of metadata files, getting their names, massaging their names and passing this to whatever I want this class to be called. And I'm adding the modifiers. So I want a public class and I want to add a field. Now the field, I'm talking about this guy over here, the instance variable. Now again, it is a primitive data type. So I'm using type name dot int. There's the name of my instance variable right over here. I want it to be private and I want it to be final. So everything that I just said is over here. All right. Now I want to add also to this class those two methods that I created up above. Right. I had a constructor and I had the actual real method. Right. So for, you know, from the point of view of Java poet, they're both methods. So I'm going to add the aircraft ID method and the constructor. Now again, I could have opted to do this all inline, right? So basically inline, I would go copy all this code and put it boom right in here. But that gets messy really fast, like I said. So, you know, my advice to you is always try to use the right spec, okay? Even if it's inline, it makes things much more easy to read when you're putting everything back together. And also it allows you to break things up in methods, right? Your own private methods. So you could, you know, it could read like butter, right? You're just kind of going, oh, you know, create this, create that. You have your own methods and in there you, 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 you kind of hide all this kind of stuff. Now that we have all our pieces together, right? We have the, the, the high level spec here for the type spec. We need a Java file builder. And that is going to allow us to actually put that spec somewhere. So I'm saying I want to put it in this package, which I just showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. And that is my high level spec, right? That's my whole class. I want to add a little comment here, right? To make people know that hey, this is a generated Java source code file. So don't go in there and try to modify it because your, your, your changes will just disappear the next time you, you build this program, right? So now I have everything in a Java file, which I can use to write to actually somewhere persist. So I'm using the Java file that write to method and I'm going to write this out since I have a Maven project to the root Maven source, as you can see here. So source main Java, right? So this package name here is going to be relative to the source main Java. And then I just write it out and boom, I have my uh, file, right? So if I just run this here, it'll, it's very fast and you'll just have here your file that I got generated. So that is just the first example I wanted to show you on Java Poet. Java Poet has a lot more stuff that I want to show you. It's really good at, you know, handling strings and indentation. Okay, we just saw kind of one statement here, but the next example is going to get really into it. 
It automatically handles imports. We didn't have to actually go in there and specify any imports. You don't see that in this example, but the next example you'll see that the imports will just get automatically generated, which is a really nice thing. The beautiful thing about it though, is it understands types. Okay, so it's not just strings that we're going to be writing everywhere. And those, you know, that is really going to shine in the other examples that I'm going to show you. As you saw, it's pretty fast. Okay, and the learning curve is very, very quick as well. It's a small library. Once you know the specs that you have to create and how you kind of have to go small to big, very easy to use. Okay, with the Fluent Builders as well. So I hope I got you excited about using that new. Uh, Java Poet library. Stay tuned for more tutorials on Java Poet. And uh, if you appreciate the video, please share. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe. All right, guys. Take care. See you next time.